rejoice, I will declare, God is my victory and He is here. This is my prayer in the harvest, when favor The seed I've received I will
Dear God, thank you for giving us another day in our lives. As a new month starts, please continue guiding us towards your word through Pastor John and strengthen us when we are tempted to turn against you. Allow all of us to stay healthy during the pandemic. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. The word of God given to us today is Matthew 11, verse 2 to 3. Matthew 11, verse 2 to 3. Let's open up our Bible and read the scripture together. When John heard in prison what Christ was doing, he sent his disciples to ask him, Are you the one who was to come, or should we expect someone else? Amen. The word of God given to us today is entitled, A Doubting Preacher. A Doubting Preacher. Have you ever met a preacher who doubted? While he's preaching to convince people to believe in God, he himself is doubting about God. Have you ever met a preacher like that? Well, it'd be really odd to find a preacher or to meet a preacher like that, right? But today, I would like to share with you a story. A story of a preacher who doubted. Who doubted Jesus. It's not because he wasn't called by God or anything. This preacher was specially called by God. He was called by God to prepare the way of the Lord. He had a unique spiritual experience of God's calling. But then came a moment and a time that this preacher also went through times of doubt. There was out in the wild a man, a man preaching loud, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is coming near. This man didn't dress anything fancy. It wasn't suits. It was just clothes made of old animal skins. He instead looked homeless. But surprisingly, people gathered from all around to listen, to listen to this man preach. And they started repenting. They started being baptized by this man. He also preached. I am baptizing you with water, but then there's going to be this someone who's going to come after me, and he's going to be more powerful than I am, and he's going to baptize you with water and fire. This man in the wild, with no fancy clothes, preaching, preaching about this man who is to come. The man who was to come after this man was Jesus, the Son of God. Did this man meet Jesus in advance to be able to preach about the coming of Jesus? No. It was revealed to him by the Spirit. The preacher knew Jesus would be coming because it was revealed to him by the Spirit. It was revealed to him by the Scripture. And that's why he was preaching about the coming of Jesus. This preacher's name was John the Baptist. John the Baptist had a father, and his father was also a pastor. One day, this pastor was praying at church, and an angel appeared, Zechariah. You're going to have a son. This son is going to be a very unique, a very special son. Why? Because he's going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. From his birth. And this is what the angel told Zechariah about this son to be born. Let us read together Luke 1, verse 17. Luke 1, verse 17. And he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Amen. What would the son do? He's going to prepare people for the coming of the Lord. This son who was to be born was going to be someone who's going to prepare the way of the Lord, the way of the Son of God, the way of Jesus. And that's what, when this boy grew up, that's what he was doing. He was out in the wild preaching, preaching about the coming of Jesus. 
He never met Jesus, but it was revealed to him by the Spirit. And that's why he was preaching out in the wild, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. And then this one day, this Jesus really appeared before him. He came to him and walked toward him. And right away, John recognized this Jesus. He said to his disciples, Look, that's the Lamb, the Lamb of God, who's going to take away the sin of the world. This Jesus came to John. He asked him to baptize him. But John was surprised. No, what are you talking about, Jesus? You're the Son of God. You're the one who's supposed to baptize me, not I baptizing you. But Jesus insisted. That's why he baptized Jesus in the water. But then at the moment, he saw how the heavens opened, how the Holy Spirit descended in the form of a dove upon Jesus. And he heard the voice of God saying, This is my Son, whom I am well pleased. The Son of God that John had been proclaiming, preaching about for the years, the Son of God that he had given his life just to preach about him, John finally got to meet him. And he recognized him right away because it was revealed to him by the Spirit. And more than that, John had a very unique spiritual experience while he was baptizing this Jesus. He saw the Holy Spirit descending upon this man. He heard how God was claiming that this is the Son that God is well pleased. How a very unique spiritual experience was that? John would have been so convinced that it was really worth it to give his life to preach about this Son of God to come. And he was so convinced that Jesus was the Son of God. But time passed. But time passed and came a time that John, the preacher who had been preparing the way of Jesus, started doubting about Jesus. Why? Because this Jesus did not fit into the expectations that John had. This is what John expected Jesus to be like. This is a passage of what John had been preaching before Jesus' arrival. Let us read together Matthew 3, verse 10. Matthew 3, verse 10. The axe is already at the root of the trees, and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down. and thrown into the fire. Amen. What does he say? The, the axe is ready to cut the fruit of the tree. That's how John understood this Jesus to come. Jesus was the axe that was ready to cut the root of the tree. The trees that weren't bearing good fruits, the trees that were bad fruits, evil trees, Jesus was come to cut it off and to put it into fire. He expected Jesus to be that axe. That person taking the action of judgment. John expected when the Son of God was to come into this world, He was going to be the judge. He was going to judge the unrighteous, the evil, and put them into fire. But this was not something that was happening after Jesus' arrival. Jesus started His ministry, but He didn't do any judgment. Instead, he approached everyone with compassion and mercy. And instead of these unrighteous people being judged, John the Baptist was the one put in prison. Why? Because he publicly claimed and rebuked how the regional king married his brother's wife. And that wasn't right. And John the Baptist rebuked about it publicly, and that is why he was imprisoned. John found himself, the righteous one, the one who was preparing the way of the Lord in the prison. And this Jesus who was to come to judge the unrighteous, he didn't do none of that. 
none of what John was expecting. And he saw how the unrighteous, unrighteous was there out in the world living their life. John couldn't understand. What's going on? I don't understand. What is Jesus doing? And that's why he started doubting Jesus. And one day he sends his disciples to Jesus to question him. And that's today's passage. Let us read together again today's passage. Matthew 11, verse 2 to 3. When John heard in prison what Christ was doing, he sent his disciples to ask him, Are you the one who was to come? Or should we expect someone else? John sends his disciples to ask Jesus, Jesus, are you really the one to come? Are you really the Messiah, the Christ, the Son of God? Or do I have to expect someone else? Because you don't seem to fit my expectations. I can't understand what you're doing. Did John doubt Jesus? Because he didn't have spiritual experiences. No. Probably John the Baptist would be one of the people in the whole historical figures to have had a very unique experience of Jesus and how he was the Son of God. But why? But why did he start doubting? Why did he start doubting? Because he couldn't understand what Jesus was doing. We sometimes doubt. We doubt Jesus. We doubt God because we can't understand. It's not that we doubt because we don't have spiritual experiences. We could have all sorts of unique spiritual experiences, but we might start doubting because we can't understand what God's doing, what Jesus is doing in our life, what Jesus and God is doing in this world. But real faith, It's not about believing what we can understand because everyone can believe what they understand. Real faith is about believing even at times you can't understand. Real faith is about believing even in times of doubt. One of the mistakes I've made as a teenager was to resolve that doubt equal to not believing. And because I had doubts, I resolved and I've evaluated to myself that I didn't believe in God. So although I was at church, my heart was closed. And it took me a long, long time to come back to God. But then later I got to understand and realize no matter what kind of spiritual experiences you have, doubts will arouse when you can't understand. But does that mean Because you doubt, you don't have real faith? No. Real faith is to believe even in moments of doubt. Real faith is to believe even when you can't understand. That's why there are so many things I still don't understand. And that's why there are times I doubt. But I persist and believe even in moments I can't understand because that's what faith is about. Let us pray. Let us pray so that God gives us a faith to believe in times we do not understand. Let us pray so that we would not be overcome by our doubts, but rather overcome our doubts. Let us have a moment of prayer.
Heavenly Father, it's not that we doubt because we don't have spiritual experiences. There are moments at retreats or other places that we were so assured of you and we knew you, we felt you. But with time pass, and we start doubting you because there are moments we can't understand. God, give us the faith to believe even through times we can't understand and even through times we doubt. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts. As we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Here's the announcements for today. Prayer for November will be grade 10. Student Council election. Student Council election is today. We will have our election just after the service. Baptism and confirmation. Baptism and confirmation will be held on November 21st. Registration is to end today. Weekly program. We have Bible sharing and PJ taxi. Thank you, everyone, and have a great, blessed week.